Welcome back to Open Line tonight. We are talking about the minimum wage in Tennessee and efforts to raise it and trying to live on minimum wage here in Tennessee. Andy Spears is my guest tonight from Tennessee Citizen Action. We're also taking lots of calls. We're going to try to go back to Carl here. Carl, are you with me tonight? Carl, here. Carl, are you with me tonight? Carl, you got to turn down that TV. Okay, we're going to give him a second here. Okay, we're going to give him a second here. Okay, we're going to come back to Carl later on. All right, we're going to move on here. We're going to go back. Uh, let's go to Michael. Hi, Michael. Go ahead. Michael, you with me? I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Well, I have uh, several concerns. Okay. You're talking about raising the minimum wage for kids in high school. Well, they're talking about raising the minimum wage for everybody. Yes, mm -hmm. for everybody. Uh, do really kids, 14, 15, 16 year old, need to be making $15 an hour when they're I'm sorry, I can't hear you. No, you, it's your floor. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Go ahead. You're on. It's your floor. You can go ahead. Okay. Uh, I uh, these kids living at home, mm -hmm. make, making fourteen, fifteen dollars an hour. All right, Michael, I'm going to put you on hold because I think I get the, the gist of, of your um, question. And we just addressed this. Is sure. A lot of people are hung up on high school kids right. making what we're proposing that maybe 20-year-olds make. Right. But we're talking about this, you know, kind of the same job. And Right. If you, I, mean, I think the, th the thing is, you know, if you put in work four hours, eight hours, whatever, a day's work should be worth a living wage. And high school kids should learn that the work they do has value. So when you say, well, it's just high school kids and they live at home with their parents anyway, a lot of times kids are um, helping to cover family mm -hmm. expenses. But even if they're not, it's important that kids learn that the work they do should be valued, that they shouldn't work for free, that they shouldn't be taken for granted, that it shouldn't be, well, you're 15 and so I don't have to pay you as much. And the other thing is, on the business owner's perspective, um, if you're paying people $15 an hour, um, you're going to have a lot more people ready to, to take those jobs. So if you have a kid who shows up and doesn't want to do their work, there's going to be 10 more kids to take the job because yes. the, ec the economics work out better. Um, it's the supply and demand capitalism situation that works out where you have people who are willing to work for $15 an hour. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't want to hire high school kids, great. If, if you, know, you may have more options in terms of choice of employees. Yeah. Okay, let's keep on moving through these lines. We have Nicole on the line. Hi, Nicole. Hi. Hi there, go ahead. Um, I, I'm sure there would be a lot of people that would love to have jobs that were $15 an hour. But from what I see is that most places, Target, Walmart, um, different places like that that are big companies, when they do hire you and they are paying 12, 13, whatever you see them going up to, mm -hmm. they drop your hours. So you are never really getting the benefit of that money. Sure. You know, you could be making, uh, just say if you were going in for 30, 30 hours a week, well, now you're down to 15 or 20, and you're not making any extra money. Nicole, have you you're experienced this? Just where you are. Yeah, have you experienced this personally? Oh, yes, I have, and, and uh, plenty of people that I know um, that work in those places, and they have high turnover, and it's not just because they're not getting um the pay is the hours so it, it, what what difference does it make if you're making 15 dollars an hour if your hours are going to decrease and you're going to get the same money those places are always hiring if you notice they always have now hiring signs out that's very that true. is one of the major problems yeah thank N you thank you nicole and do you hear this from people on your end? Yeah, I mean, I think that you definitely have an issue of, of uh, employers cutting people's hours. That's the same issue with um, one of the big challenges is um, health care. And so employees, mm -hmm. employers don't want to get tri trigger the need to offer health care. And so if you right. work a certain number of hours, then they have to offer you some sort of benefit or else you have to, you know, get on um, the health care marketplace. And so that creates a, a, a disincentive. Um, the way to solve that in Tennessee would be for us to expand Medicaid, which would then give people a chance to kind of buy into the Medicaid program. Um, it would free up employers to, to use that money to give people more hours. So, um, you know, and again, in places where they phased in um, a minimum wage increase, you haven't seen, you know, the bottom fallout. People are, are working and, and getting jobs. But if you have, you know, if you had two 20-hour a week jobs at $15 an hour, that's the same as a 40-hour sure. a week job. So. You know, there are ways to work around that, just like mm -hmm. there are at seven and a quarter. Only at seven and a quarter, 
you just can't get it done. Right. Do you feel like, you know, the, the problem that Nicole has experienced personally and her friends have too with the pulling back of the hours is more health care or benefit related more so because they've still got to have people to fill those hours. Right. Those hours are getting filled. Yes. Yeah. So I think it really is a, a benefits issue and, and people are trying not to trigger the number of hours mm -hmm. that would require you to pay yeah, that benefits. Makes sense. And so if you had access to um, in Tennessee, the easiest answer, and we're one of only 10 states that has done this, would be expanding Medicaid, where workers could buy in at a pretty low cost uh, to a healthcare system that already works. Um, and then that would free up the employers to schedule you for 40 hours. Yeah. Let's go to Denise. She's been patiently waiting. Denise, thank you for being with us tonight. Comment or question? Hey there. Hi. Uh, listen, I want to comment on what she just said about cutting the hours. Uh, that's just not a place, say, like McDonald's fast food. That started happening back in the early 80s. There were companies who owned the insurance company, owned, outright uh, had owned the uh, the health insurance company uh, for, for uh, almost 100 years that had highly skilled technical workers, and what they started doing was cutting their workers back to 32 hours a week, which was one day shy of a quote-unquote full-time worker so they wouldn't have to pay them health uh, benefits and these were highly reputable companies so they just started doing that because they were publicly traded and they were cutting into the profit and they were making plenty of profit a lot of them were monopolies but greed was not enough with them let me go back to how I understand minimum wage what it was started for was to give somebody a living wage a living wage that a across the board. I started work with minimum wage was a dollar to a dollar twenty five an hour. And when I owned a dollar twenty five an hour, I could afford a whole apartment fully furnished of uh, utilities and all for one hundred and fifty dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My brand new Chevrolet car note was sixty five dollars a month and a dollar twenty five an hour. I could make it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So in the 80s, the whole idea came about that uh, we have to freeze minimum wage. Uh, we're going to freeze minimum wage because that would uh, support uh, small businesses. But at the same time, they start uh, killing the Small Business Administration and making all these laws that were anti-small business. And all they were benefiting were people like Walmart and these big multinational corporations. So to me, that was a myth. They came out with a waitress pay. Senior citizens could wait tables at a meet, a meet and three and 85 cents an hour was their wage that they just paid. That's what they paid their taxes for. But they said, no, that's not good enough. We're going to start it. We're going to uh, freeze it out forever at 210 an hour and then make you pay 8%. We're going to assume that you're going to get tipped this amount of money. And they weren't getting tipped that amount of money. So all these seniors all of a sudden could wait tables and do stuff like that. Another thing, this is all part of Reaganomics they did in the 80s, was if you're a teenager, you're living at home was a myth, and you don't need to be making minimum wage, so we're going to have a minimum wage for everybody else, and for the teenagers, we're going to drop it back a, a couple of dollars, call it a teenage wage. Well, there were a lot of teenagers back then and now, and if you're homeless, you know what I'm talking about, that you are contributing contributing to supporting the family because in our family we we contributed when we worked to keep us all afloat in the minimum wage my mother made a dollar 25 an hour came out of a high skilled job went to a minimum wage restaurant a job back in the day and a dollar 25 an hour had just came in and she supported four children on it we skimped by at that time and she would pick pick up an extra job here and there, but she was still able to pay rent, which was $65 a month for a house, and have her a car note and support four children. So it has not kept up. Ten years ago, they said if they had not frozen it out starting in the 80s, that it should have been ten years ago, it should have been fourteen twenty-five an hour. And right now, it probably should be around 17 and I ask you this, and I'll hang up. The starting salary for a, a cash 
cheer at NES about 10 or 12 years ago was seventeen fifty an hour for a cashier's job. What is it now, around 27 So you got to look at how that works and how everybody else has adjusted up. And if you haven't adjusted up, you're starving, and that is slave wages. Thank you for listening. All right, thank you, Lucy. I said Denise, but it was Lucy. And in fact, we appreciate the call. Yeah. Um, and so where do we turn the tide? Like, what is likely to happen in Tennessee to get things to budge? Well, so there are elections next year, I would think. Um, you know, we saw a little bit of a shift this past um, election cycle um, in terms of who was at the legislature, some issues that got discussed. Medicaid expansion did get discussed mm -hmm. more seriously for the first time. Um, you know, in 2020, there'll be more elections. Um, but I think, you know, keeping that issue on the forefront, continuing to call your legislators and let them know um, the minimum wage matters. Uh, back in 2006, there was, which was the last time the minimum wage was raised at the federal level, there was an election in Jackson, Tennessee, and the number one and the only issue in that race was well, one candidate wanted to raise the minimum wage and the other candidate said he didn't. And the one who did won by about 20 points. And so the message to politicians is, if you're for raising people's pay, it's, it's, it's good for you. And uh, for citizens, if you speak out and speak up, that mm -hmm. issue will get attention. And until, that, until people feel like they're gonna lose votes, they're gonna continue to ignore working people. So Lucy was exactly right. I should probably hire her <laughs> as a spokesperson, but um, you know, these things have been going on for years and, and Tennessee elected officials have been ignoring uh, the plight of the, the working poor for a long time. And so that has to change, um, but that's gonna require a lot of speaking up. Are there companies in Tennessee that are really moving the needle on this? Um, I mean, there are companies that are talking about uh, and these are mostly larger companies that are talking about um, raising wages. Even even your big companies, Walmart, even Amazon mm -hmm. now has said that they're going to pay uh, closer to that $15 an hour rate. Um, so you do have some companies who are willing to do that. Um, and and you, what you don't see is small businesses going out of business. And so, um, you know, the other the other big part of that issue is healthcare is a huge cost. Yes. And so um, when when you don't have, when you have to cover that cost, you can't pay as much in, in wages, and so that that's a real concern. Um, you know, private health insurance is probably the biggest scam um, <laughs> the American people deal with, and so you know, your rates go up every year, your yeah. doctors change, all this happens in the private system, um, and, and we have worse healthcare outcomes than any other industrialized country. So um, we're getting a bad deal, and I, even employers, you could you could be a small yes. business owner um, and be self-employed if you had some sort of universal coverage or Medicaid or Medicare buy-in, and we don't have that, and so um, it really forces people to be tied to jobs and discourages employers from offering higher wages, mm -hmm. um, and medical inflation is 10 or 12 or 15 percent a year and that's that's just not sustainable yeah and, and just like you said it is a pull on employers as well I mean they're they're not getting rich by offering anybody right. medical benefits no and then yeah and especially if you use the benefits if you actually yeah. you know then they have to pay more and right. it creates this whole, whole cycle so mm -hmm. solving that problem would really go a long way toward freeing up some money um, you know for, for wages and so yeah. That it has to be done. You, you, yes, we need to raise the minimum wage. We also need to address the issue of, of especially health benefits yes. um, in the long term. All right, we have to take another quick break. Reverend Fuzz, I know you're on the line. We'll get to you right after this, and we'd love to hear from you as well. 615-737-PLUS is the number. We're coming right back.